So we've talked a lot about uh, a lot about a lot of things in in theory. Let's talk in practice now. So if you've already got a WordPress.com site, we can use that. If you've already got a website, a WordPress website on GoDaddy or whatever, we can use that. Or we can create a brand new one here because they're free and we can delete it later just so that we can learn what I want to talk about. So what you want to do is go to your web browser, if it's not open yet, open your web browser and go to WordPress.com. Go to WordPress.com and then we've got a big button right in the middle that says create website. Even though it says website and we're going to talk about a blog and such, it's the same thing. You can use the term blog and website interchangeably. Technically they're different, but for our purposes, don't worry about the differences. Go ahead and click create website. Right now it's telling me step one of four. Let's get started. Choose a theme. And this is the part that could maybe prevent a lot of people from going very far. What's my perfect theme? We can change this. Some of these themes might be premium themes where you have to purchase them. So I would go with a free theme. Any of these will work, but maybe if you see the one called Minnow, select that one. If you don't see Minnow, that's okay. We can always change it, but I see one basic looking Minnow. Some of them obviously look more impressive, but the thing is that they always make their theme look the best possible, and then when you activate it, when you turn it on, it doesn't look the same. Simply because just like you see that hamburger in that ad, and it looks amazing, and when you buy it, it's squashed and the meat's falling out. Well, they make this look the best. And your website could look just like the theme preview, but most likely you'll have to set up a few options and such to make it the same. So if you see Minnow, go ahead and select Minnow. If you don't, that's fine. Enter a domain or a keyword. It says, it says let's find a domain. So apparently here Nessie is here to help us find the domain, the Loch Ness Monster. So let's say I want Victor's Bakery. Victor's Bakery blog.wordpress.com is available. And it says victorsbakeries.com is $18 per year. Victorsbakery.org, $18 per year. So WordPress.com is, is going to give you a free one if you want it, of course, with their branding. And you can pay to upgrade it and such. But honestly, I have never had to, my company has never had to work with a website that was on WordPress.com. We've been on GoDaddy, Bluehost, HostMonster, um, HostGator, etc., etc. So I cannot answer how good it is to, how useful it is to buy from WordPress.com. Hopefully you found a domain name. And here's something that's more technical, but what you could also do is buy the domain name at GoDaddy and have your hosting at WordPress.com. I would not recommend that either, because that's also going to limit you. But for our class, this will work just fine. So hopefully you found something.wordpress.com. Again, in a sense, the name doesn't matter, especially for this class, because we're kind of learning. We can change it later. Select the free one. You can change your domain. Mm -hmm. Then it comes to, would you like the free one, the premium one, the business one? The free one is free for life. The premium is $99 per year. We can see here, learn more, what exactly do we get? But basically, the thing is that if you're going to sell products, it's the business one. But that's $300 a year. That's still overpriced compared to GoDaddy. You're probably going to spend $300 in three years on GoDaddy. This is $300 per year. I'm going to select the free plan. It wants an email address to confirm you because it doesn't want uh, because since anyone can create an address they, they don't want spammers so put in your email address this is not that you are creating a brand new email address this is input your existing email address to verify you choose a username and for this, I would say 
you can do anything you want here, but if you do admin, for example, that's already taken. These are usernames throughout the whole WordPress.com site. So what I would say is use the same name as your business. So I'm, do, I'm gonna do Victor's Bakery. No spaces, no symbols. Oops, that's already taken because I've done this before. Okay, what about uh, Victor's Bakery? I'll just do New Victor's Bakery. Oops, I took that one too. Also, New Victor's Bakery too. So hopefully your name is not taken here. This is a unique name throughout the whole WordPress.com site. When you create your own one on GoDaddy, you won't have some of these limitations. Make sure, you, of course, you're writing this down if you want to be able to access it later. Choose a password. And then create my account. Eventually you'll get thanks for signing up with a bunch of suggestions. Ignore all of that. At the top it will say verify your email. You want to do that at some point because you will not be able to get all of the features of WordPress.com. Without that, one of the features, for example, is to actually publish your post live to the internet. You'll be able to write it and add pictures, do all that cool stuff, but you can't make it public until you verify your email. Does anyone need help at this point? Were you able to either create an account or log in? I, um, I said after the name of my, my website, it it added the word blog. Is that okay? That's fine. Okay. It did for me as well. You can try to change it if you'd like, but it might be taken. That's why it might have suggested that other name. All right, so I'm going to assume we're all on a page that looks something like this. WordPress.com nowadays, not only is it a platform for you to write your blogs or make a make a website, in a sense, it's also a sort of a social network. So many aspects of social networks are creeping into everything nowadays. In a social network, you can follow people, you can comment or reply to people, you can favorite their stuff. That's what I can do on Facebook, that's what I can do on Twitter, on YouTube. So those are some aspects of social networks. Follow, comment, favorite. We can do that on, on modern WordPress.com. A few years ago, it was just, here's your blog, the end. But now, we are able to follow other people's blogs, comment on their blogs, favorite their blog posts, like a social network. And therefore, the WordPress.com site could be a little confusing to navigate, because I've logged in. Now, okay, it's giving me suggestions. Select a theme, create a post, whatever. But this is all part of the training wheels. I would say this is the training wheels of the training wheels. What I want to do is, if you're on this screen, you should see a bell on the top right corner. On the top left corner, you should see my site and reader. Reader is part of the social network aspect of WordPress in that you can follow other people's blogs. I want this eventually. I want other people to follow my blog, comment, subscribe, and that's all going to help my SEO. When the search engines see that your site has traffic through social media, likes, comments, and such, and your competitor doesn't, then the search engines will put your site higher than your competitor. Because popularity breeds popularity, and traffic breeds traffic on, online. We'll talk about reader later. What I want to do is, as soon as we're on this screen, I want to click I want you to click on my site. I can have multiple free websites, WordPress websites as part of this account I just created. I can have Victor's Bakery blog.wordpress.com. I can have Victor's Realty .wordpress.com. I can have multiple accounts here all for free. Uh, you can add a brand new one right there. 
But on this screen, we can get some quick statistics, like I currently have no activity, no visitors, no likes, no comments. Uh, I will be able to see the traffic I get globally, but I don't have any traffic yet, and other stats. This again is the training wheels of the training wheels. What I want to do then is, from this screen we have WP Admin. Go ahead and click that. I want to get away from these training wheels. I want to go for more power, WP Admin. Because when you look up tutorials, how to do this on WordPress, how to change my home page, how to edit a theme, how to whatever, when you look up tutorials on WordPress, 99% of the time, they're going to tell you how to do that within your WordPress dashboard. This other screen over here will not cut it. This is the training wheels. We want to be in our main WP admin. We want to be in our dashboard. And when you get GoDaddy, Bluehost, or whatever, and install WordPress there, you'll get this. You're not going to get this other stuff here. So I'm going to skip it for the moment. So when you go home and you log in again, you're going to be you're going to be put on this screen, most likely, so you want to go right away to the WP Admin, the Control Panel, the Dashboard. Is everyone here on your dashboard? Anyone yes. need help here? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, let's look at a few of the settings that are important here. We'll write blogs very soon, of course, but I want to suggest a few settings here that are useful to you. WordPress is not super complicated, but when we get into this screen, we've got a bunch of menu items on the left, and sub-menu items, and sometimes sub-sub-menu items. But I'm on the dashboard, the home section. Let's look at, at the very bottom, we have settings, hover over settings, and then click general. So the last item there on the left is settings. Hover there, hover your mouse there, and then click General. This is where we would change the, the title of our blog, for example. When someone visits our site, it's going to say, in my case, Victor's Bakery Blog. Lowercase, all run together with blog. I simply want it to say Victor's Bakery with capital letters and apostrophes and exclamation points. You know, I want it to be real human readable text. If someone visits my site and it kind of looks like all lowercase run together, it doesn't quite look professional. You want it to look like real readable text. You have a tagline here, and this is important for SEO. In a few words, explain what the site is about. To be able to be found on the search engines, we want to put out keywords and content about what our site is so that the search engines find us. So here, one sentence, a few words, one sentence that explains what your site is about. And if, if your site has a very, you know, cryptic name, PND Interactive, I don't know what that company does. I can't quite tell from the name. So I definitely want to use the tagline to write a sentence that explains San Diego Web Design Company. That explains what PMD Interactive is, and it's got some keywords. Web Design, San Diego. So when people search on Google, San Diego Web Designers, my site might appear. I could be maybe not so literal, such as your number one web marketing firm. That's appropriate as well. Web marketing is the keyword. And then here I am writing something more direct, connecting with a possible user, because that'll show up on a Google search. Maybe that resonates with someone. The whole concept of SEO and marketing go hand in hand, and marketing itself is a huge can of worms. You can get a degree in marketing. Question. It does because there's a certain point where it's overboard. Your number one web marketing firm that can solve all your problems. 
quickly and easily, blah, blah, blah. At a certain point, it's too much. What I would say is try to keep it within, within the boundaries of the box. I don't know how many characters that is, but within the boundaries of the box because when the search engines show you on a page of results, it's going to get cut off. They don't give you unlimited space on their, on their search results, on Google, Yahoo, etc. So if we keep it within the box, that should be pretty well. That should work pretty well. And then we don't, we don't seem spammy if we're trying to cram a lot of keywords in there. We want to set our correct time zone because this seems to say that we're in London. UTC0, Greenwich Mean Time, is London. We're not in London. We're in West Coast time. So you can either set your UTC offset, which no one knows that usually, or you can set it to Los Angeles, which is a West Coast time zone, right? There's a lot of cities to choose here. So uh, if you click on the box and just start typing LOS, it will jump you to Los Angeles. This is so that it is so that when you post something, when you post a blog post, it's got the right date, uh, the right time. Then we've got date. If you'd like to change the format of the date, you can do that as well. I'm going to leave that one alone. I like that one. I also like the, the date format. You can change that if you'd like. 24-hour time, for example. What day the, your week starts in, that's up to you to decide. I've got it here on a Monday. That's fine. Language. This is the language your blog is primarily written in. So if your language is going to be in Italian, in in Hebrew, in Japanese, you want to get found by a Japanese audience. So you want to change that language to Japanese. If you want the interface of WordPress to be in Japanese, you would go to this setting over here to change your interface to the other language. This is what language the content of your site is, so that it can be more easily found. Mm -hmm. Let me ask, um, if you wanted to have Another language, like for example, um, to go to French audience, um, I was wondering if I could um, do that with two languages instead of just English. That's always a. Um, I don't think there's an easy solution to handle that, unfortunately, especially with the free WordPress one. Uh, this would be called something known as a multi-site. Uh, it's it's a bit complicated, but in WordPress you can do a multi-site, which are different versions of your site for different languages, let's say. I, I'm not going to get into it because it is a bit complex, but you can easily look up WordPress multi-site or how to make a WordPress multi-site. On the right side, you've also got a picture for your blog, a little bit of branding, which relates to marketing. And so if you've got a graphic there, you, you, want, you want to put it because instead of having a generic icon, you want to have your company logo. That's part of branding and thinking in terms of SEO. Question? I'm on my own site. It's uh, self-hosted. Can you tell me where I should click off the Mojo Auto Update Manager? Please plug in the translation. I can't. During the break, we'll look at it because everyone's is going to be a little bit different, especially when you're self-hosted. So we'll look okay. at it during the break. So if you made any changes here, most likely you did, remember to click Save Changes at the bottom. We're not going to look at all of these settings, but I'm going to mention some important ones. Uh, let's go um, over to Reading. Under Settings now, let's look at Reading. We are going to be using WordPress in this class as a blog platform. So the default behavior is already correct. On my front page, display my latest posts, like a regular blog. I can use WordPress to create a classic kind of website that doesn't have a blog on the home page. Maybe the blog is in a section called blog. 
on my home page, maybe I've got some welcome text and a slideshow. And if people want to read the blog, they can click the button that says blog. In order to set up that kind of site, you have to activate a static page setup. But that needs a little bit of setup because you need to say on the front page, show my home screen. I don't have a home screen yet. And on my posts page, display my posts, display my blog posts on the blog screen. I don't have a blog screen yet. So I cannot select this version of WordPress until I set up a few placeholders. I don't have them yet, so I'll keep it as a latest posts like a classic blog. They should group these together, but you've got blog, pages, show at most, and a little bit lower, infinite scroll, or to infinity and beyond, infinite scroll. This is saying that you can choose, you've got, you can have a layout, well let me show you a tangible example, let me show you my personal blog. This is one about my hobbies. I like uh, to read and collect comic books, and I go to Comic-Con. So I've got a blog about that. And so on this one, it's the classic style, like it showed here, your latest posts. And you've got uh, a blog post. You scroll down, there's another one, and there's another one, and then older posts. So then I click there, and I see another group of posts, a few at a time, not to overwhelm people, and then I can keep going back. So, this is saying blog pages to show at most. How many per page to show? Mine is set to three, because I've got a big graphic to catch your attention. And if I had ten of them, I'd have ten posts to see at a time. This is just a personal preference. It doesn't really matter for SEO. How many posts do you want to show at a time per page? But that is coupled with to infinity and beyond because there's more and more websites nowadays where you scroll and you see a few at a time and there's no next page because 10 new ones appear. You scroll down, there's no next, 10 more appear. Seven at a time are gonna load up. Seven, not all 40 of your blog posts will download, that'll take too long. Seven will download and then when someone gets to the end of the screen, seven more will load. This is also coupled with, or tripled now I guess, with your theme. Your theme also helps you control how many posts to show at a time. And what I mean that this is connected with the first one is that if you turn this on, this option up here is pretty much moot. It's not in effect because this one is taking over. So if you don't want to automatically show seven posts at a time over and over, you want to turn off that one, and then it'll pay attention here. Show three at a time. There's no positive or negative to whatever you choose. It's up to you to decide what you like. Yes, because uh, if it's too many photos, that could be a slow download. You know, your users might take, might not spend too much time on your site because it's so slow. So that's when you would consider if it's if you've got a lot of graphics, you might consider a lower amount of pages to show at once. The next one here, these are also related. Syndication feed and for each article in a feed. We're going to have the ability for people to, to subscribe to our site pretty easily. And when they subscribe, we can either say, when, when a person subscribes, they can either get the full blog post in their inbox or a preview of it. That's what this one is saying here in your feed. And, it, and at the moment, it says full text. I don't like that one, and I don't recommend it. I recommend the summary. Someone gets an email that says, Victor's Bakery has written a new blog post. And you might get, like, for example, a teaser, one sentence, two sentences, and then read more. <coughs> then they click that and come back to my site to read more. If I give them the whole article, the whole blog post in the email, they have very little incentive to come back to my website. So I recommend to 
to send only a summary. And then when a person subscribes for the first time, how many articles will they get at once? This is going to shoot them 10 of them, maybe too many. So that one maybe you might, we might want to decrease. Either of these don't really affect your SEO. They are more for your user experience. Am I going to flood people with 10 new posts? Nope, they're not going to like that. They're going to unsubscribe. Am I going to send the whole article? Well, it might be convenient because then they read it all and they're done, but then they won't have an incentive to come back to my site. And if your blog posts are long, 500 words, 700 words, they might see it on their email and say, I'll read it later, and they never read it. So a summary will let people pick what they want to fully read, and then they'll visit your site. Mine currently says, site visibility, discourage search engines from indexing. That means kind of hide yourself from the search engines. Although it says, not, neither of these options block access to your site. It's up to the search engines. So if my site is brand new and I don't quite want it to, to be found by the search engines yet because I'm it's still a work in progress, I might want to set discourage search engines. But if someone knows my address, they can still visit it. I'm not hiding myself from the internet. If I want to hide myself from the internet, it's this one. Set it as private. Maybe I'll set it there, work on my site. Once it's ready, come back to the screen and choose one of the first two options. Most likely the first one, because now I want traffic. This is a really useful one here, related posts. Do you ever read an article? You're done with that article, and then there's suggestions. Maybe you'll also like this article, or that article, and then you do click and read another one, and then you see another suggestion, and before you know it, you've spent half an hour reading about cats. So we want that. We want people to come to our site and read one article, and another one, and another one. Why? Well, it depends on what you're trying to do on your blog, on your site. Maybe I'm simply a blogger and I want people to read my stuff. I want it easy for them to read more of my stuff. So show related contents after post. It will automatically show other posts that are related to the user. Something like this. I recommend to also turn on use a large and visually striking layout. Because that simple text, to me, kind of looks like an ad. I might ignore it. But if I've got a picture, especially an eye-catching picture attached to the post, that picture will show up there, enticing them, hopefully, to read more. To read more about that ultimate cat blog. Another reason we, why we want people to spend more time on our site is, well, let's say I'm a web designer and I want and I want traffic to my site. I mean, I'm a web designer and I want sales on my site, so I want traffic to my site. Someone visits my site because they followed a link about a useful article on how to install WordPress. Well, then they see another useful article on the best advice for choosing a domain provider, and they see another one related. Well, eventually, that person that visited my site will say, this company seems to know about web design they're giving out a lot of these great articles. I might hire them because it seems complicated. So the longer someone stays on your site, the better. They can accomplish their goal. Hire you, send you an email, read your content, etc. And that all comes from related posts. This enhanced feeds, don't worry about it. That's what extra stuff do we send to people on their email. You don't want to send too much stuff because it overwhelms them and they might unsubscribe, so don't change anything there really. Again, WordPress.com nowadays, and even on a self-hosted one, has many more aspects of a social network. So here, it will let people follow your blog, even if they don't have an account well, they'll be prompted to create an account, and it's not too complicated. So I want people to follow my blog easily, so that one's on. Once they follow or subscribe, they will get a couple of messages. You can change that. 
The default might be okay, but you can change it to whatever, such as thank you very much for subscribing, you're going to see a lot of great things. Stay tuned. And if they comment on your posts, they will also get a feedback message. Save changes. And let's look at discussion settings on the left side. Let's go to discussion. Victor? Yes. They are. You are going to see different things if you've got the paid one, the self-hosted one, and I'll bring them up when they when they come up. But we'll see some of these settings here are not the same. Um, we <clears throat> we have similarities, but some things will be different. Mm -hmm. So under discussion, uh, these ones that are here already active are are good. I'm not really going to get into details except for the ones to recommend, such as. Okay, here it is. At the top, you can decide on this. The third one, allow people to post comments on new articles. So, as I said previously, popularity breeds popularity. Traffic breeds traffic. So if there is the ability on your site to for people to comment, <laughs> that, could bring, that could be bringing you some traffic because someone comes from Facebook, they comment, and uh, their followers might see that, and that gives you more traffic. So if you let people comment, that could be helpful. The problem, the reason I say could be, is because then if you invite people to comment on your site, well you're gonna get people that care about your site and comment positively, positively but you may get spammers that try to comment on your site. Because spammers have little apps these little spiders that travel the web 24 hours a day looking for WordPress sites or other sites where they can post. So once the spider finds an article where they can post, it will then start to fill up that post, their comment, with links and spam and generally bring down the quality of your site. So you might say, okay, then I don't want the spammers to comment on my, on my site. Well, that's also going to prevent regular people from commenting. There are a few safeguards though. So you have to decide this. That it's no positive or negative for SEO. Let's say I do want people to comment. Well then I definitely want to turn on comment must be manually approved. I'm going to get an email listed right here. Email me whenever. So I'm going to get an email and on the email it's going to say John Smith posted a comment a preview of the comment, and then the button Approve, Deny, Spam. I think it's Approve, Deny, Delete, Spam. So if it's a good comment, I'll click Approve right on my email, and it'll approve it on the, on those, on the website. So now I've got a, a new comment, a real comment, a, tr a comment that will help my SEO. If it's a bad comment, like Spam, I can just press Spam and it'll go away. It never shows up on the site. So that's not on by default notice. I would recommend it. Yes? So I just want to clarify, because that seems like an important one. If, there, if it refers back to you, and then you decide, mm -hmm. keep or delete. Yes. Yes. So then now you're going to be a comment moderator. And you may or may not want that. I've already got to run my business and write these blog posts, and now I've got to look at it, what everyone's writing and approve it or deny it. So that's why you can decide at the top here, comments, yes or no. And they're not really a factor in modern SEO. So you can just turn off comments and forget about it. And maybe have people comment and such on Twitter or Facebook or no comments at all. Question. Question, um, I was just thinking that I don't want people commenting on my website, that's not the forum for it, but is there any SEO value to it? But what I heard you just say is that no matter 
Not really. Um, maybe a few years ago it might have been important, but really nowadays it's very easy for message boards and comment threads and such to go negative. So it, I don't really think the search engines nowadays value it as much. They value more activity on social media, and that has its own can of worms to deal with. So yeah, you can easily turn this off. It won't really affect your SEO. If you do turn it on, I do recommend you moderate your comments. Besides that, these other settings are fine. You should be okay with them. Yes. If you, when you want to check, comment must be manual approval. Um, do we need to check comment author must be logged name and email on, on out of, uh, other comment settings? Yes, they do. See, uh, I would recommend it, yes, because uh, this this uh, is supposed to help you a little bit more also to uh, to prevent the spammers, because if you don't turn that on, any anonymous person could write anything, and when you get that email, you won't you won't quite know who wrote it. So this is one extra little step. This is also useful because then um, if if you um, want to quickly deal with spammers and their same name keeps appearing over and over, the system actually gets smarter about it and will start to remove those names. So everything else is fine. Let's go ahead and click Save Changes. It's a way for people to, to write a little bit of uh, code within their within their uh, comment to style their text, like bold and italics and such. Most people don't know what it is, don't know how to use it, so it's not that important. Yes? Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of uh, options here for uh, regarding comments. So we can uncheck the route people to post comments. Mm -hmm. Those are just random, yeah. right? They don't, they don't relate anymore once you turn them off, yeah. Um, yep, pretty much. So I'm going to save that. If you made any changes, make sure to save. We'll look at one more of these settings and we'll take a break. Um, one of the most important settings here. If you have a self-hosted WordPress site, you might not have this setting right away. We can activate this sharing setting a little later if you're, if you're self-hosted. So click on sharing. If you're on WordPress hosted, if you're on self-hosted, just wait a moment. Sharing gives you all of the social media ability. We can do this also with your self-hosted, but we'll get to it. So the first thing that we have here is publicize. I'm gonna write a blog post, but I also want my followers on Facebook to see it. My, the followers on Twitter to see it, etc. So that would mean I would write the post and then I would share it on my Facebook, I would share it on my Twitter. And if I forget to do that, then my followers won't see it there, I might miss out on traffic. Well, WordPress gives us the ability to connect our WordPress site with our Facebook, with our LinkedIn, with our Twitter. And once we are ready to publish a post on our website, we turn on Publicize and it will automatically go to those networks as well. It'll get published on my site and send a preview copy over to Facebook, to Twitter, to Google Plus for me. <clears throat> so I <clears throat> don't need to remember for myself to go publish it on Twitter. I just make sure it's connected here and then it'll go, it'll, it'll be like an email blast in a sense. It'll go automatically to my Twitter or all of these that I want here. Yeah. Isn't it duplicated if you're using Buffer? Right? Yes, if, if, you have, if I've talked about Buffer in another class, okay. it would duplicate it. So you it would post twice. Right, you would have to turn it off if you're using Buffer. Well. Yeah, any of those websites that do this sort of thing, it's going to duplicate it. So if you're using Buffer or Hootsuite and Publicize, <clears throat> suddenly that one post will get sent three times to your users, your followers, and they won't like that. So it's kind of either or. And these are all off by default. You have to activate them. And can you disconnect them at any point? 
you can. And also, uh, if we create a business presence on, say, Facebook, uh, other than just our profile page, uh, can we do that and, and direct it to the business Facebook? You can. The only one that you can't do that with is Google+. Plus. That's what this is saying here. This will only go to your personal. But if you have a business page on Facebook, you can direct it there. Um, uh, how we can, uh, how this is related with um, people that um, subscribe or receive your posts, so they going to receive repetition all over every time? This assumes that they subscribe to you and that they follow you on Twitter. If they do, then yes, they will get their repetition. So this aspect of social media is for you. You are going to share this to your own social media profiles. The other side of the coin is you want other people, you want the user, the reader, to share to their social media. Someone reads a blog post, they really like it, they want their friends to see it on Twitter. That's the next section here, sharing. It's a little confusing, so let me explain it, then we'll do it. There's three sections. Available services. Oh, let me do something here. Notice it says, please note your service has been restricted because your site is private. Okay, let me do something here. I'm going to put this back on reading, unlisted. Where is it at? Okay, if you've got it on private, it's going to be a little limiting. I forgot about this, but here we go. So if it's, if it's not private, we've got three sections. Available services, enabled services, and what does it look like? So this is saying, I post an, an article, I post a blog post, and people will see that it has the ability to tweet it, or share it on Facebook, or Google+, or share it on WordPress. So someone visits my site, they like the article, they want their friends on Facebook to see it, there's a button to share on Facebook. It'll look like that. Let's say I also want people to print it. So from the top here, I'm going to drag print and put it right here, let's say. So now people will see that on my article there'll be a print button. Then I've got email it, LinkedIn it, Reddit it, Tumble it, Pinterest it, pocket it. So let's say I can rearrange these however I want. I want to add extra ones. I also want Reddit. It'll look like that. So you might say, well, why don't I put all the networks? You can, but then it'll look cumbersome. So you've got an area on the right side. If you put it in the gray area, you will then they will then see a more button. So maybe the top three networks that I want to be shared at will be visible first, and then people can go to the More button, it'll look like that, share easily on those networks, and if they want more, they click More, and they have more options. Question? Do we need to our business profile to have no, this is them sharing on their own personal Tumblr account. So I don't need Tumblr. I don't need Reddit. Uh, if someone wants to share it there, they will share it via their network to their followers. So if they share the blog post where that's you know secondhand viewer be able to be directed back to my website? Yes. Yes, WordPress will automatically fill in their tweet with that information. The user can change it. They can remove the link back to you. They can remove your name. But WordPress will automatically fill in that attribution information, and, but the user could change it if they'd like. Yes? What is press first? Well, this is like... Uh, about the aspect of WordPress like a social network. So let's say someone else that has a WordPress.com account finds my account, my blog, they like an article, they can click press this and basically it copies a preview of my article 
to their WordPress and then they can add their own comment and that gives me a link back to my own WordPress. And so this is the preview below each post you will see that. We have a few options for button style here. We have icon only, so they'll look like those. We have text only, which looks really boring. And then we've got official buttons. This one is really useful because this will then show you the activity. Popularity breeds popularity. So if I've got a few shares on Facebook and Google+, that'll entice people for them also to share on those networks. The problem, obviously, is that when we have a brand new site, these will all say 0000. zero, zero, zero and no popularity breeds no popularity. So maybe at the beginning, have it on one of these other icons that doesn't explicitly say how unpopular you are at the moment. And then as you get popularity and, and traction and traffic, then switch to the official one, and then that will then entice people. This is pretty popular on Facebook. Let me share it also. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, is Instagram not part of this network? Say that again? If one has Instagram. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's only what's listed here, unfortunately. And anyway, on Instagram, that would be a little difficult to share there because the only way to share on Instagram is through the mobile app. You cannot share on the web. So perhaps in the future, other networks connect with WordPress to let themselves be shared too. But at the moment, it's just these. And we can say, well, where would you like to see these share buttons. It's going to be on posts and pages. We haven't talked about the difference yet. We're getting to that. But we can also have share on media, which is a picture. We can also put it on the front page and such, search results. But usually this will work well for us. And actually, we oftentimes don't need pages. Uh, so we'll talk about the difference between posts and pages, but really you're mostly going to be adding posts to your site, not really pages. And um, this front page or front page, it's not necessary to uh, check posts, so it's kind of overlapping both mm -hmm. of them. Yeah, you don't quite need the front page uh, because we have other, other, other ways to make it more effective. Okay, if you have a stack of one, that, that would be okay. Mm -hmm. Sharing label, that's just the text that appears above the text. So share this, or you can simply say share. Whatever you'd like that text to say above your social media, you can make it say be social. Anything there that makes it obvious to your audience that they can share. If you do have a Twitter account, this is how it automatically puts your Twitter name when someone visits you. So if I've got Victor's Bakery, that's my Twitter name then when I tweet it, it will automatically have my Twitter name on my tweet. Do you have to do that? Do I don't think so. Twitter username to include. I'm, I'm not quite sure. I usually put it without it and it works fine. And then here's the thing about the social network built into WordPress. Would you like to get likes? That's fine. Again, popularity bees prop breeds popularity. Would you like people to reblog your content or further share it on WordPress? Yes, that'll get me more traffic. Would you like people to comment on your likes? Sure, that'll also generate possibly traffic. So that uh, sharing screen is one of the most important ones. If you've got self-hosted, you don't have it automatically until you install the Jetpack plugin. So if you've got your own self-hosted, you want to look into installing the Jetpack plugin, and then you'll have a sharing screen. All these other settings not really necessary for SEO, so make sure you've saved this screen, and then we'll take a break. When we come back, we'll talk about the big difference between posts and pages. We'll actually add a post. We'll keep going, and then before you know it, the day will, will be over, and then we'll come back and delve even deeper about actually writing. So there's a lot of important foundational things to talk about regarding blogging for SEO, and actually writing the blog post. We'll do that, and I'll have a checklist that will guide you. So it's 11.56, we're back at 12.06.
and we'll proceed. And I do have to say, actually, uh, I need to take a break too.